Hello, I'm Simon and welcome to the channel. Now, a few years ago, um, July 2015, so coming up to six years ago, I did a coolant change video and I'll say right from the off that this is my recommended method of changing coolant. In the video, I showed how to drain the cooling system from the bottom, flush the cooling system with, uh, with clean water, initially from a garden hose and then with distilled water, how to get the um, concentration correct on the coolant. Lots and lots of methods in order to get the cooling system as clean as possible before putting in the coolant and then it lasts as long as possible. And the coolant that you'll see a bit later on in this video is the same coolant from that video at six years old and you'll see that it's perfectly clean. And so that method really does work if you want to do your cooling system once correctly and, um, and have it last a long time. But there can be occasions where you might want to get coolant out of the system using an alternative method if you can't get the car in the air maybe you don't have you know a, a, a jack or you don't have ramps or the the um, radiator hose pipes are difficult to access any number of reasons really plus there might also be things where you're just wanting to do a bit of maintenance on the cooling system so you might want to just change the expansion tank so you need to lower the level of the coolant in the system or maybe change the thermostat on mine it's right at the top of the engine and so if i can lower the coolant level in the engine it just means that i don't lose a load of coolant if i'm ever to change the thermostat so you might also have um you might want to uh, repeatedly flush out old coolant maybe it's the wrong specification or it's gone a bit murky or whatever and um, and this is another great way of doing it it doesn't replace gravity um, gravity draining of a cooling system because you can get sediment that can hover about at the bottom of a cooling system but if you've got no alternative or you just need to do that bit of maintenance then um, this might prove useful to you I'm using in this a um, 12 volt tire compressor, very basic, um, cost me about 20 pounds. And um, on this, I can set the pressure at which the compressor will automatically cut off. So I set it as around about 12 PSI. Most cooling systems operate up to around about 15 PSI. So if you set your compressor at 10 to 12 PSI, if there was a blockage for any reason and, and the pressure started to build up in the system, you're not going to go bursting any hoses or anything because the compressor will automatically cut off. And... I'm doing basically a variation of the original video where I was forcing um, clean water into one of the uh, expansion tank hoses. And because the only other open hose was the return hose to the expansion tank, it basically forced old coolant and clean water back out of the other hose. And so what I'm doing in this video is just using everything all connected up in terms of the the expansion tank hasn't been removed or anything but i've just removed the return hose and that will enable me to either put compressed air into the expansion tank itself which will then force out old coolant out of the return hose or i could force air into the return hose and it will then come out of the expansion tank as well and that's what i'm showing in this video just because it looks a little bit more dramatic and it's a, a better illustration of exactly what's going on here now you're never going to completely empty the cooling system using this method and um, and so in my case it gets out around about three liters but that's plenty to lower the level in the cooling system so I could then change the expansion tank or the thermostat without then losing a load of coolant because the cooling system has a much lower level of coolant in. Once I've then done whatever I need to do, I can then pour back in what I've taken out and, um, and restore the cooling system back to its original level. Now, you may not get everything back in that you've taken out in one go because there could then be air in the system so you just fill the expansion tank with what you've taken out back up to the maximum 
drive the car around, allow the thermostat to open, allow the system to burp, and then just add what you drained out until the coolant level is correct. An alternative is to drain out what I've done here, and then you would just eventually you reach a point where the air that you're putting in gets past the coolant and it no longer forces out any more coolant. So you then just refill the system with distilled water and that then re-establishes a better pressure in the system basically. So when you put the compressed air in, it will start to force out more of the old coolant. And you basically just repeat that. You force out what you can, refill the system with distilled water, force out what you can, and eventually you reduce the, um, you dilute the old coolant that's in the system. And uh, you've just got distilled water in there. And then you add your concentrated coolant in order to get the strength back to the level that it needs to be. So yeah, it's... Um, like I say, it's it's not my preferred method, but it can be very handy in you know in certain circumstances where you just need to lower the coolant level in the system in order to do a bit of maintenance or to flush out the old coolant. And that's it. Hope you find that useful. And thanks for watching.